This video will be perfect for somebody that's not super familiar with Portland. I'm going to get you up to speed real quickly. And if you are familiar with Portland, feel free to follow along. Give us your take in the comments. I'm going to give you mine. All that starts now. Hey everyone, welcome back to Living in Oregon. First thing we're gonna start with is, uh, we're gonna give you a little bit of a lay of the land here. First thing you need to know about Portland, it is a tri-county area, three counties. Some people might include four counties. Those people typically live in Vancouver. The red lines here are the county lines. Multnomah County is where Portland proper is, at least the vast majority of Portland, maybe about 98% of it. Over here to the west, you have Washington County. Over here to the east, the very large county that extends all the way over to Mount Hood is Clackamas County. So Multnomah, Washington, and Clackamas County make up the Portland metropolitan area. Like I mentioned, some people would include this up here, Clark County, where Vancouver is in Washington also as part of the Portland metro area. Like I said, usually those people are people that uh, that live in Vancouver, though. Now, although some of these counties, Washington and Clackamas County, extend out pretty far, kind of looking at uh, about this radius roughly right here. People beyond a Forest Grove and probably beyond Hillsboro, really not considering themselves part of the Portland metro area. Clackamas County, kind of down to Wilsonville, maybe out to Canby, uh, as far east as Happy Valley, maybe Damascus, kind of anything beyond that. Uh, also kind of not really considering themselves part of the Portland metropolitan area. And you can see Multnomah County actually goes all the way over to this county light, line right here is going to be Hood River County. So Multnomah County does also extend pretty far east. Portland originally used to be made up into four quadrants, north, south, east, and west. The river right here, the Willamette River, used to separate east and west. This line right here follows a road called Burnside, and that kind of separated north and south. Now we recently have added, we've uh, added a little slice right here from southwest to make it just simply south. So we have south, southwest, northwest. This all used to be north, but now we have north and northeast. North is primarily uh, St. John's, which used to be its own town. And then down here we have southeast. And then out here towards Gresham, Troutdale, sometimes you'll see people refer to this as East Portland. So you could actually break this up into uh, seven different sections. Also, these areas used to be known, some of these areas used to be known as uh, districts, and you will still see that sometimes some places uh, throughout town, you'll see areas that are still referred to as the districts. Now, let's take a look at some topography here, because if you're not from Portland, sometimes people don't quite realize where kind of like the flat areas are and, and where the hills are. So east side of Portland, again, north, northeast, southeast, largely flat. You can see Mount Tabor right here, which is actually a dormant volcano. If you're driving by it, it, it largely just looks like a, a big hill, maybe from the Midwest or something like that. You might, you might think it's a mountain, but uh, here in the Pacific Northwest, uh, compared to what we normally see, like in Mount Hood, for example, uh, this is a, a very, very, uh, not even a big hill, probably a small hill. Once you get over the west side, though, you can see we have the West Hills, lots of hills back up in here. So if you're looking for a place, looking to avoid those hills, maybe because of the weather or you just want a flat piece of land, you're going to have to go out further if you want to be on the west side towards Beaverton and Hillsborough. And finally, a lot of these West Hills kind of go down into Clackamas County, down into South Portland. And if you're not from this area, one thing to know, kind of nationally, sometimes we get made fun of this stuff, but it does snow here occasionally. And when it does, usually the city shuts down and it's because of these hills. Snow combined with a lot of people that don't have traction devices or snow tires combined with hills makes for a lot of accidents. So city tends to shut down when we get snow. And we've been getting a lot more snow recently over the past few years as opposed to maybe the past few decades. So snow does kind of seem to be a little bit more of a common thing here in Portland every single year, whereas in previous uh, maybe decades, every three to four years, you would typically get at least a, a decent amount of snow that will stick for a day or two. So if you want to find a flat space, you can find it. Like I said, largely going to be on the east side of Portland, going to be hard to find beyond that. Uh, with the exception of going out west here, lots of farmland, and that's typically what you're looking for, something that uh, used to be farmland but uh, has since been converted uh, into like a new subdivision or something like that. Again, if you really want something flat. But Portland does have, have something called an urban growth boundary, which is established back in the 70s, and it was aimed to control urban sprawl and uh, kind of protect rural lands. Like I said, lots of farmland in Oregon. So it's uh, kind of been a defining feature of Portland's urban development. 
So land inside this urban growth boundary uh, supports, you know, things such as roads, water, sewer systems, parks, schools, fire, stuff like that. If you're outside of these areas, you're oftentimes going to be on like septic or well. We do have a video on some rural properties uh, or buying a rural property if you want to see what that's like. And every six years, the uh, Metro Council um, and looking through at this map, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, Washington County, Clackamas County extend out pretty far. A lot of those people that are out west, out east, don't necessarily consider themselves part of the Portland Metro, but kind of anything within the urban growth boundary is a good place uh, to kind of define for the people that live there, people that consider themselves living uh, in part of the Portland metropolitan area. So you can see going down south, down to Wilsonville, Oregon City, like I said, can be. Once you get that far out, those people might consider themselves part of the Portland Metro. Got to probably just depend on the person. And one thing that's been developed uh, over recent decades is uh, Portland's MAX system. So Portland is uh, really known for their public transportation and uh, bicycling. One of the most bicycle friendly cities in the country. So we have this MAX system that goes all the way out west to Hillsborough, all the way out east to Gresham. Sort of newer uh, going down south towards Milwaukee. You've got a max system that's going to take you through most of Portland. Portland was founded uh, in the mid 19th century, right around here, around Oregon City, which is the end of the Oregon Trail. A lot of history here. And of course, the location uh, is very strategic, right along the Willamette River. Uh, also, the Willamette River running into the Columbia River, which really makes uh, Portland an ideal port city. The Willamette and the uh, Columbia Rivers were really crucial in helping Portland grow. Uh, as a really big shipping hub in the Pacific Northwest. Of course, we're known uh, for trees or forests, we're the green state, but the proximities to the Pacific Ocean and the easy access with the Columbia River, uh, you know, really makes Portland uh, a great place for trade, especially international trade. A little bit of quick history for you too. And uh, this is what I recall learning in grade school. Who knows if it's still true to this day, you know, if something's changed or or what have you. But uh, Lewis and Clark initially came here from the east searching for a passageway that would go from the west to the Great Lakes so that people in the east could get quickly over to the west because before the Panama Canal, he had to go all the way down to South America, all the way down to the tip and come up, uh, up the uh, Pacific uh, coast to get to the western United States. And when Lewis and Clark first found the mouth of the Columbia River, they thought that uh, this is precisely what they were looking for. And they were hoping that that Columbia River would go all the way through to the Great Lakes. But uh, lo and behold, it did not it actually goes up in here into Washington. But nevertheless, the Columbia River and Willamette River, very beneficial for Portland and growing over the centuries and trade. And that, of course, the coast gives you some of the greatest amenities uh, for people that are living in this area, coast is about an hour and a half just to the west. We actually have a, a separate channel on the Oregon coast if you'd like to learn more about the Oregon coast. And then just to the east, about an hour, hour and 15, depending on where you're coming from, probably about an hour, hour and 15 if it's east, uh, maybe hour and a half, hour and 45 if it's west, just to get from Portland to Mount Hood. Mount Hood is one of the, I think it's the most climbed mountain in the United States. I've, I've tried a uh, twice myself, uh, unsuccessfully, uh, unfortunately. In my offense, the two times that I did try were some of the, probably the weather was about as bad as it gets. One of the days was the, the hottest day on for the year. And one of the days, the other day I went was uh, the coldest day. And search and rescue was up there near the summit as they oftentimes are. And advised nobody uh, to go up unless they were roped up, which we were not. But if you like skiing, snowboarding, any kind of mountain stuff, climbing, one of the great amenities being close to Portland is having access to Mount Hood. If you do want to climb another mountain and uh, maybe want something a little less challenging, one I have had success with is uh, Mount St. Helens, maybe a couple hour drive uh, from Portland. Rivers, lakes, coast, mountain, we've got all the outdoors amenities that people could possibly want, which is part of what makes Portland so attractive. All right, so let's talk about some of the challenges that uh, Portland has had recently. I've had people reference this to me before. This is actually from 
2021. I'm going to show you a couple different maps here. This one I think is a little bit more updated, but uh, one thing people will talk about and ask about a lot, some of our uh, challenges is crime. We do have uh, a couple of videos that uh, are dedicated just to crime. If you really want to dig into that, I would say before 2020, largely Portland felt like a very safe place. I think it still does now in 2023 and going into 2024, you can definitely find some people that say that they don't feel safe. And that's probably reasonable. You know, they, they probably have a reason to say that this is a, a shooting map. You can see where all of the shootings are happening. I think largely, you know, if you do watch our crime videos, uh, a lot of crime uh, we're covering in there. Statistics, a lot of crime went up in 2020. Uh, the short story is that that is coming back down. Like so many cities, Portland really struggled after COVID, but probably struggled maybe a little bit more than some other cities. And it's just this past year where we felt like uh, things are slowly starting to turn around. And one thing to point out too, if we scroll out a little bit on this map, so this is largely Multnomah County, again over here, Washington County, and then Clackamas County. You can see the uh, the suburbs, Clackamas and Washington County, really insulated uh, from a lot of this stuff. It's really pretty quiet out in the burbs in Portland, Oregon. So if you're thinking about moving to Portland, you've seen some stuff in the news, you're worried about this, just know that there are places uh, where crime is relatively low. And I guess, of course, crime is subjective, depends on what you're comparing it to. That's why in our videos, we typically, we just like to go over data and you can check those out on our channel if you want to. We've got at least a couple on the topic. Now, as far as jobs go, Portland's economy has certainly evolved over the years. Portland's really been known, uh, like I said, we're known for our trees, so known for our timber economy, our green spaces. Uh, but Portland's really kind of become a hub for technology and uh, other creative industries. We do have a fair amount of companies in tech. Uh, the healthcare industry is fairly large here, manufacturing. Portland's also got a decent startup scene as well. Portland is home to Nike, which is going to be over here in Beaverton, Intel, which is over here in Hillsborough. This area out west is known as the Silicon Forest, sort of pond off of uh, San Francisco's Silicon Valley. Certainly don't have the tech that San Francisco does, but uh, uh, the tech does make up a large part of the industry in Portland. So you're going to find a lot of jobs out west, probably more so that, out than out east for that reason. A lot of people that are moving to Portland do tend to uh, move over here out west. Beaverton is probably one of the more popular places that people move. We do also have Adidas uh, Corporate over here on the east side of Portland. OHSU, Oregon Health and Sciences University, one of the top healthcare providers around here. So the healthcare sector is really rapidly growing. And of course, there's a lot of job growth and job opportunities in the food and beverage industry. Portland really known for its culinary scene. And of course, food carts. If you come to Portland, you're not familiar with Portland, you have to visit the food carts. It wasn't that long ago that the food carts were really just over here, downtown Portland, and then kind of over on uh, the east side, northeast, north, southeast. But now a lot of the suburbs also have food carts. Most of the, the suburbs, most, uh, most of the bigger cities in the suburbs from Beaverton to Happy Valley to Oregon City, most of these suburbs have uh, at least one kind of food cart pod. And then of course you've got tons and tons of great restaurants here also known for our microbreweries. So for all you foodies or someone that's thinking about getting into starting a business in the food and beverage industry, Portland is probably about as good as it gets. And of course, if you're into fresh and local eats, Portland's farm to table scene is also about as good as it gets. Chefs here are really big on, uh, you know, grabbing ingredients and uh, everything they need from nearby farms. You know, it's not just about the taste too. It's about uh, supporting local farmers and uh, sustainability. Plus, it's hard to beat the uh, taste of uh, fresh farm to table. And we can't forget about the coffee, too. For all of you coffee lovers, Portland's coffee culture is uh, huge here. So tons of local coffee shops, probably very similar to uh, Seattle's scene. And then, of course, can't forget about all of our beautiful, fruitful vineyards that we have here in the Willamette Valley. If you're a wine drinker, you can find vineyards pretty close to the Portland metropolitan area. A lot of stuff's going to be 30 minutes away from people. Wine kind of wine country proper is going to be kind of down here, which is maybe roughly an hour, 45 minute drive, depending on where you're coming from. Definitely something that kind of shapes the culture in Portland. If you're not a wine drinker, the one thing I would say to you is that uh, I think maybe some of the apprehension for people is it's just like a pretentious thing. Uh, that hasn't ever been my experience. It's very laid back. 
all these vineyards are very welcoming of all all different types of people with all different types of palate or lack thereof. So if you've never tried it before, just getting out into the country, having a glass of wine, having some great food, which there's a lot of great food out there as well. Usually a fun time for all. And then on top of that, we also have quite a few food festivals. Whether you're a vegan or a seafood lover or just want to try new things, there's a lot of events in Portland every year for wine, beer, and food. All right, so if you're moving here, how about the real estate market? My name is Seth March. I'm a licensed broker in the state of Oregon. I've helped a lot of people relocate to the state of Oregon. We are your Oregon relocation team. As it stands right now, coming into the new year, we've had about as much inventory build up in the past few months as we've had since 2020, since COVID, since the real estate market really went crazy. If you haven't been following these things, inventory has really been kind of the crux of this problem. Not enough homes, which makes the market really competitive. It's still competitive. So there are still multiple offer situations. People are still losing out on offers. But for the most part, it's fairly balanced. It's probably about as good a time to buy as any. Uh, one of the benefits of buying in this, the winter time is that uh, there's going to be less competition. There's typically less inventory in the winter time. Although right now, like I mentioned, we do have quite a bit of inventory. It's not a lot of new inventory. It's built up inventory that's been sitting in the market. So it might not feel like as much inventory as we actually have. But again, it's still more inventory that we've had in previous years. And then of course, the other big news is going to be rates. Rates went from about 3% to 6% uh, in less than a year, and then all the way up to 8%. And just recently, they've come back down. I've actually seen stuff into the high sixes now. And there's a lot of speculation about what's going to happen if rates go down. There's some people that are saying that if rates go down, a lot of sellers are not now going to come to the market that have been waiting to come to the market. And thus, we're going to have a lot of inventory and home prices will go down because it won't be as competitive. I believe the opposite. I believe there's a lot of buyers that are sitting on the market right now waiting for rates to come down. And once they do, those buyers will re-enter the market. It's going to be even more competitive than it was, and that will keep home prices up. And that's kind of what we're looking at going into 2024. It looks like we're going to see rate cuts. So I'd expect the market to get more and more competitive. But if you have questions about these things, like I said, I'm a licensed broker. I invite you to reach out. You can call, text, email. You can find a link below to get into our calendar however you want to get in touch. And if this video helped you, give us a thumbs up. Let us know we're doing a good job. Feel free to leave a comment. I just ask that you keep it civil. I've lived here my entire life. I don't claim to know every little thing about Portland though. So if there's something you think I missed, something you think is important, feel free to, uh, to share in the comments below and let others know. And if you want to see more videos like this, of course, if you want to see more videos about what it's like to live in Portland, we have over 100 on the channel. Make sure and subscribe. Until next time, take care, everyone.